What's what? That. On there? That's yeah. your skin. Why? It's getting better. Why? Because it was hurt before, but now with all the cream, you know when mummy and the nurses rub the cream in? They put cream on this special part and they put the bandage on and it's going to make it better. See, like She's been in pain every day for the last four months. Um, often many times a day. The first two to three months, um, my whole life was just filled with sadness over what was going on. And see, when you hold it, it goes all runny. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie Delizio has just turned three. It's hard, isn't it? Five days older than her playmate oh, Molly Wood. Good girl. Two little girls linked by tragedy. I must get some stairs. <laughs> For this to have happened, it, it is so bizarre that it it just it makes it makes everything about life uncertain. It's everything that you do mm. it is is uncertain. Need to know basis. What's hurting, sweetheart? Isn't that sweet? Can we rub your tummy? Would you like a massage? You made a rub it or massage? It shouldn't have been like this. Molly and Sophie spent happy days together at their local childcare centre. Their parents confident they were safe and well. I mean, you do everything that you can to make, to make your children safe, and then something like this happens, and you have no control over it at all, and they could have been anyone's children. Yeah, you I know? think that might be the key, that they could have been anybody's. And, uh, uh, you know, the kids were asleep waiting for Santa to come and stuff like that, and all of a sudden, you know, the whole childhood's taken away from them. Oh, that's a... It was the 15th of December last year at the Roundhouse Childcare Centre at Fairlight on Sydney's northern beaches. It was nap time. 20 toddlers expecting that when they awoke, Santa would be there. Instead, an out of control car crashed into their room bursting into flames, trapping Molly and Sophie underneath. It's every parent's worst nightmare in the sense that you place your child in someone else's care, believing that everything would be all right, and it wasn't. I ran the last 200 metres because I couldn't get near the place. and. Um, then they told me that uh, Sophie was hurt and she's already been taken to hospital. The snapshot of that first image will stay with me for the rest of my life and see her child um, absolutely encased in foil and bandages and um, other than her face and her toes, the only parts exposed as I recall. Um, I had to have people from that point assist me in standing because the shock was starting to set in and I wasn't able to stand on my own. I could only see certain parts of it because certain parts were covered. But I do remember a little toe stick. Sticking up, all charred. I knew that was pretty serious from, the, from that. She was lying on her back, <clears throat> so a lot of the major injuries weren't visible to me, and I wasn't sure exactly. It was only when we were in the ambulance heading up the road that um, I said, uh, you know, what, I'm, I'm trying to get stock of what, what, I said, what actually we faced here? You know, and he said, look, it's bad burns. I said, is it life-threatening? He said, well, all burns are life-threatening. The first thing that happened to me when I arrived at the hospital was I was greeted by a chaplain, and um, I, I was absolutely mortified. It was the worst thing that could have happened to me because that made me, that made me realise there was something really bad going on. Molly suffered third degree burns to 40% of her body. I'll tell you what we're going to do first. Jo's going to come and she's going to take your plaster cast off. Sophie was even worse. 85% of her tiny frame was burned in places down to the bone 
so badly she lost her right ear and both her feet and fingers of her right hand had to be amputated. She's as, as badly burned as she can be. It just, as one would see in a, in a military injury, it, um, as, as bad as it gets. Can we turn your head into the middle? Surgeon Dr Peter Haywood had never seen Burns' injuries to a child as severe as Sophie's. There certainly were, were areas of Sophie's burns that were as, as deep as one could burn a human being, which was tragically so, and that's why initially her survival outlook was particularly bleak. All I could do was pray, and I thought if we're going to lose her now, I want her to... to go to heaven with lots of prayers. There was an enormous amount of angst about the decision of whether to resuscitate Sophie. What sort of life are we salvaging? Um, what are the possibilities? And it, this was not a decision made lightly or quickly. Uh, and in fact, there was a, a lot of discussion, not only with the parents amongst the doctors, about the pros and cons of should we go forward or not. It was in the first five days they said, um, they gave us the option of let, letting her go. They actually said that? Mm, they said, you know, there's, there's no shame in, in uh, letting Sophie go. It's not something you could have entertained. <laughs> Uh, Joe. That's Joe. Michelle's not, not here today. I don't like it. For all Burns patients, infection is the enemy. Good girl. Okay, go get your smoothie. And it was to be no different for Molly. Other arm. Can you reach with the other arm? Do that arm. Every one of her skin grafts became infected, requiring major surgery on Christmas Eve. She suffered a heart attack on the operating table. It was a devastating um, afternoon. Um, I, of course, I'll always remember it. Um, Dr John Harvey heads up the Burns unit at the Children's Hospital at Westmead. Although I was anxious on many, many occasions, I didn't think we'd lose her other than at that moment in the operating theatre, which was an awful moment, and I was obviously very worried. In fact, I... Um, uh, rang a mate on, on Christmas Day and I said, um, you know, I don't think we're going to get out of here, you know. So. While Molly and Sophie fought for life, their story touched communities right around Australia. Thousands of families rallied to provide financial and emotional support. Hundreds of thousands of dollars was raised for the girls. When you receive support like that from other people, mm. it, it strengthens you, and it does. We can't possibly thank everybody, you know, we'd love to thank people. We'd love to go door to door and say, look, thanks a lot, and this, mm. is, this is a result of your faith here, you know, but uh, we can't. So we figured that, yeah. you know, getting Molly out, the, out of hospital was a pretty good thank you to, to everybody, you know. 80 days after the accident, Molly came blinking back into the world, holding the hand of her sister, Lily. To see them walking out, or Molly being wheeled out, and Lily walking beside her with their teddy bears is a, is a great moment, when so much, so many people have put so much into it, and, and Scott and Caroline and Molly and Lily, everybody has put so much into it. Yes, it's a great moment, a really great moment. Lily, too, was at the Roundhouse Childcare Centre that day and has her own nightmares to deal with. She has very strong memories of, uh, of Molly being covered in blood and that's how she refers to her. And she still thinks that she's that way now. Um, she talked about Molly not coming home. She would wake up in the night and cry and I'd hug her and she'd say, I don't think Molly's coming home and all of that kind of stuff. And these two are such beautiful friends. I and mean, they walk around this place all day. It sounds really silly, but they walk around all day and they hug each other and they tell each other they love each other, you know? That's it. Now do this one first. Oh, can we do the other one? Do this one first, isn't it? 
Can we do this one? Yeah. No? Yeah. No. Molly must return to the hospital for regular physiotherapy. Again? She was just having trouble clearing her toes. Yeah. They're all swimming over to you. But for Sophie, this oh, is fine. home for the foreseeable future. Hey, Dad. There he is. He's watching too. Ron and Carolyn oh, live head, here Dad. at the hospital. One of them sleeps beside Sophie every night. They work incredibly hard at making her life as comfortable and normal Hello. as possible. <laughs> Hello? Where is, look, look again. Where's Sophie gone? I'll knock on the door. You've got to keep your mind positive all the time, otherwise it'd, just, it'd be too hard. I'll open the door. Oh! <laughs> again. Again, Mum. Again? It'd be too hard. Faith and mm. hope. They're the two words, huh? Absolutely. Here they come. Oh, there's a big one near your nose. They're the things that keep you going through this. And we're very fortunate that Sophie's such a courageous little girl because she's kept us going. I caught it. As she's kept going. And um, when you stand by her bed and see that the bravery in her struggle, you can't help but keep going. And you go, keep going for her sake and you keep going, keep going for your family's sake and you do whatever you can do. But it's tough love. You think we can get to Nemo? No, I don't want to. Daily physiotherapy means more pain. She's now addicted to morphine and there's much more surgery to come. I, I would predict so Sophie would have surgery um, for the rest of her growth phase, probably till she's about 16 or 18, because as she grows, she will literally outgrow the grafting we've done for her. So her skin grafts are like a wetsuit, but they won't expand at the rate her normal skin would. Big smile. Come on. Jeez. Has she ever spoken of the accident? A couple of times she's... She starts crying and saying, she says things like, uh, Mummy, Daddy, I'm upside down. Uh, sometimes she says, I'm dead. Um, I'm dead, I'm Mummy. Dead. Or, I'm dead, Daddy, I'm dead. Um, we don't know why she's saying these things. It's, uh, it's coming very close to a time where we're going to have to, I'm going to have to tell her um, the extent of her injuries. Okay. Well, have you decided you're the one to do that? I feel as though I'm, I should be the one. I, I don't want anyone else to tell her. Um, I don't want to put Car Carolyn through... <laughs> through it. I'm not sure how I'm going to say it. But I think it, it's got to come from me. That's all right, baby. Really That's it. That's it. Yeah, Daddy's got you. Daddy's got you. When you have a child faced in, faced in this situation, you, you do whatever you have to do um, and you want to do that. You want to be there for them because, um, you know, we just feel very privileged at this point in time that I can lie in bed and sing songs with her at night because we didn't expect to be doing that with her. The broken nights and the days in hospital pale into insignificance when you think you've still got it with you. No. <laughs> Have you got a date that you're working towards to getting Sophie home? Very early we were told that three to four months in intensive care and six to eight months in a ward and we would be thrilled to have her home by Christmas. One year. Mm. And do you believe that could still be the case or are you hopeful of something better than that? Hopeful of something better than that. Both families cling to the milestones along the way. Happy birthday, dear Sophie. Just recently, they celebrated the girls' third birthdays. The Woods and the Delizios have shared a painful journey and have forged a lifelong friendship. Best friends. Best friends. That's gorgeous. One side's Molly, one side's Sophie. They've been there for each other. That's lovely, that. 
and for each other's children. That's beautiful. That's no, 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 have you got your lipstick on today, Sophie? You have? Is it the sparkles or the strawberry? Strawberries. It's the strawberry. And what sort of perfume have you got on today? Oh, very nice. You smell beautiful. <laughs> Just beautiful. The 68-year-old driver, whose car ploughed into the childcare centre, has been charged with dangerous driving, causing grievous bodily harm. But right now, neither family has given much thought to the impending court case. My focus is on getting Sophie well and out of hospital, and that is where all my energy is going and all my emotion is going towards that. And part of that healing process will be, will be me going back to look at the accident site and having an understanding of the accident, but it doesn't help Sophie. Because your energies have to be elsewhere. That's right. Does that mean that somewhere there could be this anger? There could be this... No, I see the anger as a wasted emotion. You're missing your muscles, sweetheart. Good girl. What a good girl, honey. We don't do everything to try to make our girls safe. And, um, I mean, it's, it, it's hard because the roundhouse is the most amazing place and the people are just the most beautiful people. And we chose it all carefully and I wouldn't change any of that, any of the decisions that we made. Um, I, I don't know. It shakes your world. Mm. But I guess the, the day will come when you, when both your daughters will have to walk on their own. Yeah. And that'll be a tough day. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, know how, I don't know how you do that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm walking around looking the whole time. I'm, I'm looking for things that couldn't possibly happen to happen. And um, when you're not on top of it, that's what you do. You walk out and you're, you're just waiting for something to fall over, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. ha you have no control over... It, it, it's, it's, like, it's like all of a sudden, life is a massive suspense story. And I'm looking forward to getting to the end of it. I don't mean it like that. I'm looking forward to knowing that my girls are okay. That you don't have to worry anymore. Yeah. We had dreams as a family, and those dreams were shattered on the 15th of the 12th. And that, it comes to you in realisation over a period of time. So we rewrite the dreams. What, what is the dream now? To have Sophie home. To have her say, I'm a happy girl in the mornings again. Um, to be together as a family. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.